Savage Finance. Because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. What's going on? Right now, what we're going to talk about in this video is holding company and LLC intent and practices and the, well, the way that you'll go about it. Honestly, holding companies, LLCs, S corps, how do you pay yourself? This can be really, really confusing to the average person. And actually there's a few steps that should happen before you even get to forming your LLC. And we're going to talk about it in this video. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is go to the front of the channel and begin to watch videos from the beginning of the channel up to now so you can get your financial education. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the United States of America and the freedom of intent. Do you know if you want to set up a trust fund to take care of your dog, you could do it. It's perfectly legal. There will be no one that said, no, you can't do that. And I know that sounds like a silly example, but that I use that to let you know just how much free range you have. With an LLC holding company structure trust, you can do whatever you want to do and the average person isn't used to that type of freedom. And that's why it gets a little complicated because you've got to deal with your first part of, I can actually do that? So let's go ahead and talk about the holding company and LLC formation process. First of all, I should caution you. You shouldn't be forming a holding company. You shouldn't be forming LLCs unless you have a viable way to make money or you already have a lot of money. So this is my advice. Start your business, start making money, start getting customers, getting cash flow up, and then form your LLC because you can still take all of the benefits and the tax deductions and stuff once you form your LLC. So there is no hurry for you to form an LLC before you start making money because unless you're making money and running money through the LLC and having the corporate checking structure, it's just, it's not a lot of money unless you're in California because it's like 800 bucks or you're in New York, you know, you, you know, to file your LLC isn't that much, but the publication guidelines are stupid, like $600, $800 to advertise and publish your LLC. So in most states, you can form an LLC for 50 to 150 bucks and that's going to be your cost, your upfront cost. And then a little later, you will have what's called an administration fee that every state charges at the beginning of the year. So this is why you don't want to form your LLC December 31st, because at the first of the year, they're going to hit you with that administration fee. But first of all, just make sure that you have a economic vehicle that is making you money before you form your LLC or if you're in a position where you want to form an incorporation, an inc, and you want to get investors and you want to share stocks, you know, percentage of your company, which will be represented in stock shares, then you will form an incorporation. It really depends upon who you are, where you are, and what's your intent. Intent is everything. What you intend to do is everything. Like I can give you an example. You can form a holding company, like give you an example of my corporate structure. I have a holding company and then I have an operating company and then I'm going to have more subsidiaries or child LLCs that will have each one of these YouTube channels in there. And I know that seems like, why would you do that? Savage Finance, which is three months, about to be four, about three and a half months old, made $450 last month and by the end of the year savage finance should be doing about twenty thirty thousand dollars per month so that's income that will be derived from this channel that i want to segment from my other income now why would i do that strange thing about when you start to make money people want to sue you people want to come after you and the llc holding company structure is a perfect way to limit liability Let's say, you know, I'm doing something, you know, I'm, I'm getting wild and free here on Savage Finance and I say something that gets me sued. Well, this channel 
would be in a separate LLC. In this channel, that, that's as far as it's gonna go because if I go ahead and did something like I had my holding company and I had the operating company and I had all of my YouTube channels in that one LLC, all of my YouTube channels, my, everything in that LLC would be open. So if Hustlers Kung Fu got sued or Savage Finance got sued, there would be no firewalls. Anything that's part of that organization is up for lawsuit. So segmenting your money is a good way to reduce liability and to protect yourself in the future. So each YouTube channel that I have is in a separate LLC that is part of the holding company structure. Because to me, it's a hundred bucks to sub the LLC and it's 50 bucks a year. To me, that's really cheap compared to, let's say I got sued on Savage Finance and they came after me for half a million dollars. Let's see. And that, re, that vibrated through my whole organization that hit up Hustlers Kung Fu, that hit up B-School for Hustlers, that hit up everything. That would be a whack. This is one of the games that I learned when I was up at Business Environments. I'll even tell you one of the things that happened that, you know, it ain't for average folks because average folks look at everything as, how do I save money? How do I not spend money? And they don't look at it in terms of, if I do X, Y, Z now, this could prevent me from having to drop a whole bunch of money later. Uh, the guy that I worked for at my last job, he had his wife on payroll. She got a check every two weeks. He paid her $68,000 a year, even though she was a stay at home mom with their four children. And I was like, why are you doing that? And he says, you know, I'm worth about $20 million. If we ever got divorced, she could go ahead and say that she had no income, all right? Follow me. And he says, because I pay her this and this check goes into her personal checking account, she has a job and she has income. So if we ever got divorced, instead of her taking 10 million, she would get nothing. And let's go ahead and do the cost of $68,000 a year. For 10 years, that's 680,000. 20 years, that's $1.2 million. But even at 20 years, if she divorced him, that would save him from losing $10 million. And this is how you've got to look at it because everybody's trying to, you know, get the most for the least amount of work. And that's just how it isn't how it works in the LLC game. So one of the things that you have to understand is when you put together your LLCs, you're also creating tax deductions, you're creating segmentation, and you're creating future protection because you're shielding your assets. I was watching the video and I thought it was crazy because this guy was a truck driver and he said that he did a sole proprietor and then later on I saw a video where his trucking company was an LLC and I was just like, because see, if you had a trucking company, and if you're a trucker, listen to me, you wanna have your trucking company in an LLC, because if you don't have it in an LLC, and if you run your trucking authority as a sole proprietor, and you run everything under your name, if you have an accident, your house, your pension fund, your cars, the clothes in your children's bedroom are all up for grabs because there is no distinct separation between you and the business. You're just one and the same. You'll be treated as one of the same. And in terms of, they can come at, you could get sued and lose everything, literally everything. Whereas if you had a limited liability corporation, as far as the damage would go, it would be to that truck and that company and then insurance company. So this is one of the reasons that you want to put together an LLC game. And let me just say this again, don't do this before you have money coming into your business. It is so important before you actually start forming these entities because they cost you money. It'll cost you a lot of money unless you're informing an incorporation, which is a whole bunch of things. You gotta have meetings, you gotta keep up with your shares and boards and members that that's, you know, if you're not there yet, I would suggest you don't do that. But one of the things that you want to understand is you need to have money coming through. This is how the game works. 
So go ahead, get 30 days to 2,500, start working on your side business, your side hustle, the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead and get that. And what's gonna happen is once you start to build income, this is where the game changes. Because you want to shield and segment your income. And one of the things is like for me personally, I don't really own anything. Like I have a one luxury vehicle that's in my name and my other luxury vehicles in the company's name. It's not mine. Even though I get 100% enjoyment out of it, I don't own it, the company owns it. And this is one of the things that you will get to do with the LLC game is you'll, you can have a house, you can drive a luxury car, you can have expenses every time you go to lunch. All these can become write-offs that for you as a person without an LLC, these are not deductions. You can't deduct that. And so this is sunk money. Essentially, when you start playing the LLC holding company game, it is more of a lifestyle alteration. It is really a different lifestyle. And this is one of the things you have to understand because a lot of people are like, I want to start my LLC and they go to LegalZoom or they go to the state and they just put together what I call a paper thin LLC without the appropriate articles of organization, without the appropriate language, without the appropriate intent, without the appropriate structure. Many business owners don't have a proper LLC and many business owners don't even have proper checking. And this is something else. If you have an LLC, you need to maintain a personal checking account and personal savings account. This is how many LLC and business owners screw themselves. Let's say you are a business owner and you have an LLC and you have one checking account for your business and you run all of your personal expenses through that business checking account. Guess what you just did? You pierced the corporate veil. You actually created a situation where there is no separation between you and your company. And if you got sued and all it takes as a smart attorney is in the process of discovery is to subpoena your checking records. They're trying to sue you. They're trying to get money. So that's going to be fair. And the judge is going to approve it. And they're like, oh, he's been paying his mortgage out of his business checking account. He's been paying his car note out of his business checking account. Your Honor, there is no separation between John L. And, and John L. Inc. There's none. And then everything is open to fair game. And this is one of the simple little things that so many business owners don't understand, that don't know because they, they feel that they're protected, but their behavior is creating a situation where they're no longer protected. So if you have corporate banking, business banking, you also need to maintain a personal checking and savings account and you need to put money in there and like many people's like how do i pay myself from my llc it's very simple you could put yourself on payroll you could actually have a check issued to you in the same manner that is issued to your employers your employees you could do that and also your you know you, you hear that the internal revenue service makes you put up a certain kind of salary. It ain't true. You can pick whatever salary you want to pay yourself. And that's one way for you to get paid. And then you could take profits through dividends and taxes must be paid on these dividends. Let's be sure. But see your taxes, because it's classified as a dividend, are going to be way less than if you just took the money out and paid regular taxes. Like, give you an example. I had a client who wanted to qualify for certain loans and we had to have this very painful conversation. You gonna have to pay a lot of taxes because see, whenever a business owner goes for a loan and they take their deducted tax paperwork where they took all of these deductions and they lowered their income. Yeah, man, I had $250,000 come through, but their tax forms say that they only had 40,000 come through. The bank is going to lend you money on that 40 K, not that 250 K. So we had this conversation because she was making, you know, seven figures a year. And I was like, well, if you want to put yourself in a position to be eligible for these loans in the future, I mean, she was paying $20,000 a month in taxes. And I mean, we, the first, when this first started, I mean, she was like, oh my God, they were taking all my money. They're taking all my money because $20,000 is a lot of money, but 
it put her in a position where she was able to qualify for the house she wanted. She was able to get business loans because she had verified taxable income on the books. And this is one of the things that trips up so many people. They will go out and get a business and deduct everything. And then they try to get a loan and the loan officer is like, uh, we can't help you. And they're surprised because they don't know the game. And essentially, whenever you're trying to get something, you got to pay taxes on that money. But the good thing is you as the business owner determines when that's going to happen, because let's say you were going to qualify for a house and one year you just paid taxes and took less deductions. OK, and then once you get the house, then you can go back to deducting everything is how you is if you know the rules of engagement, if you know the game, you know how it's played. And this is really, really powerful because being a business owner, having a holding company LLC structure will open up so many tax benefits and you can get so creative in the things that you can do. You can become so creative. And this is something you can't do in your regular walk of life. And this is why you need an LLC. This is why, you know, because some people, they can get away with just an LLC. I personally know that going forward, I'm gonna start multiple businesses. And I actually have two holding companies because I set up a holding company for my real estate investments because the way they are internal revenue service is that, you know, real estate is such a different beast that you are literally forced to create a different holding company for real estate. And I have a holding company for my media company and there are many, many things that I'm gonna do in the future. So if you're a hustler and you're gonna know that you're gonna start multiple businesses, I suggest you set up a holding company and then you set up these operating companies. Let's say you wanted to set up a media company, you wanted to set up a laundromat, and let's say you want to set up a grocery store. I would have each one of those business entities in a separate LLC wholly owned by the holding company. This is how Warren Buffett does it with Berkshire Hathaway. So this is how the game is played because this creates the separation. Let's say you had the grocery store. Let's say you had the grocery store and someone fell in down and broke their ankle in your aisle. They can only sue that LLC. They cannot sue the holding company. So that limit, that, that risk is contained in that LLC and it doesn't filter over to your media company and your laundromat. Many people don't explain how the game works and they don't understand the power of money. And I'm just telling you that as you're sitting down thinking about your future and thinking about the businesses that you want to run, because right now there are many people who's like start a business and flip it. Why would you do that? I had a friend who wanted to sell her company. Her company was worth a half a million dollars a year. She was just bored. She was tired of it. And I sat down with her and I was like, don't do it. Don't sell the company. What you do is you hire someone to replace you and you keep this company because this company's making half a million dollars a year. And if you hire the right person, it can make more, pay their salary and keep giving you that half million a year. And that's exactly what she did. And then she started a restaurant and the girl that she hired was such a great asset. And she was paying this girl six figures that the girl doubled the company's revenue. So it went from half a million to a million a year. So she went from not working in that business to now getting like $750,000 a year for something that she had put together many years ago. It was almost like passive income. You know, she still went in the office once a week to sign papers, to look over stuff. But, you know, because her the restaurant's her passion, and this move gave her the income to start the restaurant and to start it off right where she wasn't in debt. So this is so many things that we're gonna do, because I'm gonna be talking about a lot about businesses, starting businesses, LLCs, corporate structure, corporate checking, because there's so many business owners who don't do it correctly. They're just out here hustling and they're running they don't know what they don't know. Let me just say it this way, because when you don't know what you don't know, you don't know where to look, you don't know where the right questions to ask. And this is one of the reasons I created this channel to be a resource to help you with your future business endeavors, as well as managing your money and making more money. So let's do this. 
Go below, get 30 days to 2,500, the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead and get that. And if you're in position, I have an LLC, a holding company, like if you're broke, this is gonna to be too much for you. Just keep it a buck. But if you're in the position where you know that you wanna start multiple businesses and you wanna set up everything, because what I will do is I will include the strategic holding company course as well as the money management course. I'll put all that together where you can get that and it will teach you how to set up your holding companies, how to set up your, your subsidiary companies and all of this. And I'm telling you, literally the tax benefits that you would get, let's be clear about this, once you start making money, will easily pay for the course, easily. The tax benefits alone will easily pay for the course. So be sure to check out this next video right here, right here.